It's time for another edition of Macintosh Fever's Ancient Audio Technology Corner. Although ancient may be debatable. So, what happens to a recording on a compact cassette analog audio tape that's been sitting around for eh, a few years? Let's find out. But first, this brief warning. Turn your headphones up for the quiet section, but turn them down very quickly when it ends. Otherwise, R.I.P. Headphone Users. <laughs> That's what you'd hear if you were just sitting there listening to the tape. Now let's boost up those soft levels just a touch. <coughs> now let's hear it with the audacity noise cancelling. All right, let me explain. Recorded May 18th, 1991, that awful sound was me after finding out that a favorite radio station was changing formats. A little over the top much? Anyway, I was recording on a BASF Chrome Extra 2 100-minute navy blue, silver, and black analog audio compact cassette. From side two of the 12th and final edition of Soundscapes with Enigma, on 88.9 FM WERS, Emerson College, May 18, 1991, my senior year. On my second boombox, a 1988 Panasonic RX-CT800 dual tape, five band equalizer, boombox with detaching speakers. So, the analog audio tape had been sitting in somewhat temperature and humidity controlled storage for about 22 years until the first digital remaster in 2013 from a Sony sports walk man into GarageBand. Then in December 2023, the analog master tape was again taken out of storage to be re-remastered and re-edited for uploading to the Internet Archive. So, that's 32 years later. The new remaster was from a TAC W-1200 dual tape deck bought in 2022 into Audacity. This is a demonstration of post-echo, also known as print-through. Post or pre-echo, depending on which way a spooled tape's been wound, happens when a strong magnetic impulse on the top layer of a tape imprints itself on multiple windings of the tape. That is, an imprint onto separate layers that sit beneath the original recording's top layer. Depending on the formulation or thickness of the tape, a pre- or a post-echo can be heard multiples of times. Let's take this recording in sections so you can hear how many windings or layers were affected by the primary recording. <laughs> that was the original recording. The next part has noise cancelling from Audacity, so you can hear the post-echoes a little bit clearer. After the first cut, you'll hear a very brief print-through of me saying something unintelligible. Here's post echo number one. Here's post echo number two. Post echo number three. Post echo number four. And finally, post echo number five. Well, the fourth and fifth ones sounded like I was nauseous. Those post echoes were on an unrecorded section of tape. Some formulations and thicknesses may be better than others for reduced print-through when left in storage. So, take your tapes out for a spin once in a while, whether you listen to them or just wind them every so often, so that sides 1 and 2 are alternated. This may lessen or prevent the pre- or post-echo print-through. Also, keep your tapes in a low-humidity, temperate place for their physical preservation. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Thanks for listening! <laughs>